What's up, my YouTube and nation? This is Chris, aka Bar None Eleven Nine Seventy, and as always, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my channel. And for those of you who are new, I welcome you to what I try to do, which is speak as much truth as possible. Now, that doesn't mean every single thing I say is absolutely 100% always accurate. Sometimes it's based on people's opinions, other people's research. So we can't guarantee that everything that we talk about is 100% accurate. But when I mean by truth, I mean that the purpose here is to try and educate people with information and enlighten people to what's really going on. So there's no agendas here. There's no people trying to make money off of this. This is not fear porn or scare tactics. And it's definitely not conspiracy theories as the way people are led to believe what that term means. Because if you look up the word conspiracy, all it literally means is when two or more people conspire to do something. So, for example, if you and your friends decide to go out to get pizza, well, you've conspired to go get pizza. The problem is mainstream media, which is owned by approximately, at this point, between six and seven corporations own about 95% of the media that you read, see, and hear. They want to silence information. And that's one of the reasons why they're trying to get rid of this freedom that we have on the Internet. So a lot of the information that you're going to get from the media is owned by corporations. You yourself are a corporation and don't even know it. Now, I'm not going to get into that here, so I know things are going to sound a little crazy on some of the videos. But all I ask is, instead of automatically dismissing something because it may not sound right, check and verify things. And I have several videos where I point out an information where you can find things. Now, a couple of things I want to talk about, because there are plenty of people who have responded to my uh, my most important video, uh, the one, the 49-minute minute video about the truth about the United States law and you. Now, it really talks about law all over the world, but the reason I talk about the United States is because that's where I come from. I know how to look up the Constitution, and I'm not familiar with other countries' constitutions or even if they have them. So it is going to vary a little bit, but pretty much when it comes to admiralty law, it's going to apply to every country. Even though admiralty law is law of the sea, it doesn't have to be in the literal sense for them to be able to use it. So please keep that in mind. Now, the one thing I like is there are people who are asking questions. That is a good step. So I appreciate that. One of the questions that I find that is asked most frequently is one of the parts I talk about in that video is talking about the placenta. Now, they can extract DNA from the placenta, but that's not the only way they do it. You also have to um, realize that they also take a blood sample. Blood samples have DNA in them. So when people say things like, well, what if I take the placenta home? Does that mean I'm no longer a corporation and they no longer own me? Well, as, as much as I wish that was possible, they have so many other ways that they entrap you. So keep this in mind. If you have a driver's license, if you've ever registered to vote, if you have a government-issued birth certificate, if you've ever paid government taxes, if you've ever signed a federal document, you are part of the corporation known as the United States or whatever country you're in. So it's almost like this. Let's say a person's about to be executed. And the person, the way they're ex going to execute them is first they're going to strangle them. Then they're going to stab them. Then they're going to shoot them. Then they are going to drown them, and then we're, they're going to send them on fire. And they decide, for your case, they're not going to shoot you. So just because they took away one part does not change the fact that you are going to die. So if you only remove one part, it does not fix the problem. But I like the fact that people are asking these questions. Another question or statement that people make is, well, how, how can they have used DNA when it's only been a recent discovery? Well, that is a very good question and a valid question. But here's a question for you. How do you know when DNA was first discovered? Because the government said so? 
Do people realize that back in the late 1800s, there was an inventor who worked with under Thomas Edison? His name was Nikolai Tesla, and he had a machine. Oh, several machines, but he had one machine called the Tesla coil that could actually extract electricity from the atmosphere and send it wirelessly to buildings and homes so where we could have gotten free energy and not have to pay for it like we have. He also had the ability to create weather patterns. Again, it's nothing more than electricity in the atmosphere, lightning, things of that nature. But governments hide these things and they own them. I mean, look at old World War II movies. You ever see when they talk on those huge gadgets that look like walkie-talkies? Well, hmm, that's almost like the same thing as a cellular phone, isn't it? Just on a bigger scale. They've had computers. They have technology that not we're not privy to. And I actually research and watch plenty of people who talk about deciphering the codes of even the Bible. Now, people will say, well, why is that relevant? Well, in the Bible, if you decode it, and there are people that have been spending their whole lives doing this, they've seen the exact number of the speed of light, 186,400. They talk about atoms, molecular structure, DNA. They talk about lasers and spacecrafts. And I know this stuff sounds crazy, but if you ever even read the Bible, it says that it is all written in allegory, which means it's not meant to be taken literally. It's basically, the Bible is, is a book of decoded messages that they can transfer throughout history to get information without being murdered. Because if you notice, all people that try and do good in our lifetime and several lifetimes get murdered. It's not a coincidence. Look at JFK. Look at Malcolm X. Look at Gandhi. Look at John Lennon. Um, look at some of the famous historians throughout our history of our lifetimes. The people that try and speak out are the ones that either get imprisoned or executed. There are plenty you've never even heard of. People that have had cures for cancer. Um, there was a person, um, several different people, actually, I forget the name. Um, one of them is Wilhelm Reich. If you look him up, Wilhelm Reich, he was thrown in jail in 1953, I believe, somewhere in the 50s. He created a machine that could create rain out of clouds. So that would be perfect for drought infested areas. And he also had a machine that could help cure cancer. And the uh, FDA had him arrested after he proved that the machine would work. Threw him in jail, burned up as much of his information as he could, and now to this day, most people have never heard of him. So as far as the DNA thing is concerned, I can understand what people will say, oh, well, they haven't, they just recently discovered that. Well, we don't know that. We're assuming that. So I'm not saying I know the exact date, but I'm also not saying that you, you cannot dismiss something based on feelings or what you've been told. Unless you believe everything that government's talking about. And if that's the case, you would not be here. So we don't know when DNA was ever really discovered. I mean, you look at the Vatican alone. The Vatican, whether you know it or not, has hundreds of miles of catacombs beneath the Vatican filled with ancient knowledge. Books that you'll never be able to see or read. It's the internet that's getting this information out. That's one of the reasons why the government is now trying to take over the internet and trying to control it. It is not about, and I, I, I watch Stone Fox Media, I'm subscribed to him because I like to every now and then take a break. So I subscribe to a couple of people like with the video games because I grew up a gamer. So um, I haven't done that in years because this is more important to me. Um, but I subscribe to other people that are talking about video games. And I saw one of Stone Fox Media uh, videos today talking about what's going on with the internet. And it's not just about TV, like controlling Netflix and Hulu. And it's it's not about controlling video games. It's about controlling the freedom of information on the internet. They have control of radio stations, TV stations, newspaper people. They've bought those companies decades ago. And like I said, if you look at nine, about 95% of the media that you see reading here is owned by about between five and seven corporations. 
So they control your outlet of information. They don't control the internet. The internet is one of the last places where people can go and get information that is sometimes contradicting the people that talk in the media. So in other words, truth can get out. Like, for example, if you watch my 49-minute video or other videos that I have, you will never see that stuff on mainstream media. They will never even question things. And now I'm not saying everything that I talk about is 100% right, like I said. But like, for example, why does the media not question things? Why do they not bring up things? Isn't that what the purpose of media is supposed to be, is to basically be the fourth branch of government, is to keep them in line? They're bought and paid for. But the Internet is one of the last places where we can get this information out. It's their Achilles heel. And if we do nothing and allow them to get that hook into the information of the Internet, it's pretty much going to be almost as close to game over as possible as far as getting information. And people need to understand governments throughout the world, whether you like it or not, are working together. And I know people say, oh, well, you know, the tinfoil hat thing and the conspiracy thing. The media has made the word conspiracy seem like it's something evil. Why? Because if you think it's evil and you think it's a bunch of crazy people, well, you'll stay away from it. Well, if you're a smart person and you want to keep people away from stuff, isn't the best way to do it to make them scared of it? You have to think on their level. You have to use this God-given gift you've been received as a brain. Why do you think they use video games and movies and famous people's controversies and tell a visions to give you information, tell you what to like, tell you what to do, tell you how to dress, tell you the information that they want you to hear? And people like myself and others who are exposing the lies and trying to expand the information, we're seen as crazy people. Now, if you've never seen my videos before, and this is the first time you're hearing this stuff, I can totally understand that you will think this stuff sounds crazy. I was the same way when I got bombarded with this information back in about 2011, early 2011. And it's changed my life. I will talk about things that I not only research, but I do. Like, for example, sun gazing. People I know will say, that, what is that? Well, that's staring at the sun at the proper time, and it heals your body by sending electricity through your nerves, which is nothing more than nerve endings that attach to the brain, and your body is nothing more than electricity, and you're actually bringing direct light source into your eye through your brain, which helps heal your body. Now, most people will say that sounds crazy. Well, if people don't research it, how do you know? And you do have to do it properly. You can't just look at the sun at any time during the day. You will hurt yourself. So anybody dumb enough to do that without researching, you know, there are people that you don't, you don't have to jump off a bridge to know it's dangerous. But if somebody wants to find out, don't complain if you, if you die, which will kind of be hard to do at that point. But what I'm trying to say is the information that we have on the Internet, is one of the last places we have left to get out this information. The reason they've been able to control societies for so long is because it was easy to silence one or two people. I mean, think about before the radio, before television, before newspapers. How far could information get if it was only delivered by word of mouth? It can't go that far and that quick. Now with the internet, you can get instant messages from people across the world. And they don't like that because it's hard to control people if information is getting out that contradicts what they're programming you with. They're so smug about it. The, the TV is called Tell a Vision and you're watching Tell a Vision, excuse me, programming. It's right in the words. So for those of you who have that aha moment, I'm not telling you to believe what I say. I don't want you to believe anything anybody says without verification, without taking time to actually verify it yourself. Because things are not always lies. Sometimes it's just inaccurate information, or they said it wrong, or you might have taken it the wrong way. But wouldn't that seem a better way to handle things in life is by verifying things, to making sure 
that something is accurate or proving that something's wrong. Normalcy bias is when you automatically dismiss something because it doesn't sound right. You don't believe it. And that's what they want. And that's why in school, which is run by governments because governments control the education system, as long as as well as the health care system, as well as the oil industry, the banking industry, the media. You know, get in the picture. School is meant to educate you, but not in the way you think. It's not creating wisdom. It's creating disciplined people who respect authority sit up face front raise your hand when you want to be spoken to go to school when we tell you to when the bell rings change classes eat when we tell you to do your homework don't speak do the pledge of allegiance stand up when the bell if there's an alarm go outside it's all about controlling you and for those of you who get it you're on the right path and there is plenty of information to learn about this. But please, for your own well-being and the well-being of your future and your families, don't just dismiss something because it sounds weird. It makes no sense to do that, and that's what they are counting on. They are counting on you to be lazy. They are counting on you to want to spend your whole life just saying, oh, well, there's nothing I can do. And this is another problem in the truth movement. There are so many individuals who only care about their own agendas that they're not willing to work with others or help others to get information out. There are so few people that are willing to share and see beyond the small picture. So yes, there could be information that could get you out of the system and another person over there out of the system and maybe a couple hundred people over there. But think of it like this. Let's say you're on a pirate ship. And you find a way, you're in the middle of the ocean on a pirate ship, and you're an a worker swabbing the deck, and you find some loophole that gets you out of swabbing the deck and not becoming part of the pirate ship anymore, but you have nowhere to go. What makes you think the pirate, the captain of that ship is going to say, well, he found a little loophole, so I'm just going to leave him alone and let him stay on that side of the boat and he can do whatever he wants. No, he's either going to go over there with his mates and kill you or he's going to throw you overboard, or he's going to say you have two choices. We kick you off the boat, or you go back to working for us. It's the same thing with these governments. Do you really think you're going to get a bunch of individual people who learn a way to become free, to live on their supposedly owned property, and, and just let you spend the rest of your life that way? I mean, look what's happening to people like Dean Clifford. And that guy inspired me to learn about this stuff. And he knows more than I'll never ever know on my best day, on his worst day. And right now he's in prison, not because he's saying the wrong things. It's because they're trying to prove a point that one or two people, one or two hundred people cannot make a difference. There's a reason why we have the expression, united we stand, divided we fall. And until all of these truthers and all the people trying to figure out what's going on in this world all decide to stop doing the whole divide and conquer thing and actually start working together and realize we do have the power, it's either all or nothing. And that's what people don't want to get. And that's why they want you selfish. That's why they want you greedy. Why do you think they promote things on the news like things like selfies? Because they want you to think that you're the only important person. You're the only person that matters and screw everybody else. Instead of saying, we're all human beings, we are all one, we are all united, and we can work together to oppose anyone that oppresses us without an ounce of violence. You want change, people have to stop waiting for change. They have to make change. And even in this, like I said, this quote-unquote truth or community, if we don't start working together and we don't continue to help educate people, we're going nowhere fast. And that's what they're counting on. The whole reason for a democracy, even though it's not something you even want, because democracy is when the many tell the few how to live and what they can and cannot do, which is great if you're the majority. But if you're the minority, it's very unfair. But this country alone was founded as a republic. To the republic for which it stands. Here's the trick. They've even taken the democracy and turned it upside down because it's no longer the, the many telling the few what to do. It's now the few telling the many what to do. The few being the government 
and the corporation corporations that own the majority of all the industries that we need food medicine education gas energy and telling the masses what they can and cannot do while they do the very things they say you can't do and while we get thrown in jail they get bonuses instead of everybody saying well let's wait for some superman to come along and save us we have to do it ourselves it's plain and simple as that so i know people also ask a lot of information from me of what can i do to be free you can't think that way we have to think what can we all do to be free because if I wanted to just think about myself, I wouldn't even make any of these videos. I would just get the information, secretly keep it to myself, go free myself and say, the hell with everybody else. But I'm not here for myself. Because even if I got free, I'm still living in this country. You can't go anywhere in the world without it being corporate owned, whether you believe it or not. So there's nowhere to run to. You're on a ship out in the middle of sea. I'm not talking literally, but you're on that pirate ship and you found a way to not be part of the pirate ship, and you think that the captain of that ship is just going to let you roam. It ain't going to happen. So we have to get off this individual mentality. Until we learn to unite and work together, it's never going to change. And that's why I ask people to share my video. I mean, please, make your own video. You find somebody else's that's better, use theirs. This is not an ego thing. This is not about look at me. That's why I don't use special effects. I don't use fancy music. I don't cut up videos. I don't add all things that you could look at and be distracted with. If you need a fancy looking video to keep you distracted, I mean, keep you interested, then, you know, you really have to refocus your priorities. My videos are all about the message because to me, the only thing that's important is the message. If you need to have frilly things here and frilly things there so you can be entertained to pay attention, then you're in it for the wrong reasons. Don't be distracted. Think of it like when you were learning something important in school. You didn't need all fancy, beautiful things and nice sounding music in the background. You just needed to hear the information. And even with that, I get very few views, but enough to show that people do care. And that's why I do this. And that's why I don't ask for anything. But we need to get this right United we stand, divided we fall. And I will dedicate the rest of my life talking about this. And again, don't dismiss something just because it sounds weird. Because keep in mind, the masses of people have no idea what they're talking about. They just follow what other people have told them to follow. Do you like being a follower? Doing things because somebody else told you that that's the way it should be? Liking things because someone else told you it's cool to like it. Don't be an individual. Don't be a follower. Be an individual. Be a person that could think on their own. And somebody asked me one uh, a couple of days ago, "Am I a free thinker?" Well, and I wrote as a response, "No one could ever be a 100% free thinker because the majority of things that we've learned in our lifetimes is through other people teaching us." But the fact I went from a person that believed everything that was said on the TV and automatically would believe in what the news media or the government or our politicians would say and going to a person that now questions things, to me, I'm on the right path. Don't be afraid to question things. They want you to feel unpopular. They want you to be like the masses. Be cool. Be like them. It's all about working your ego. And that's why they talk about things like selfies. They want you to focus just on your self-interest and also fitting in to what other people are doing. Why do you think some of the more popular videos on YouTube are things about video games and people making fools of themselves by injuring themselves or girls doing makeup tutorials? It's because you can't learn anything from those things and they're going to promote them. And that's why videos like mine and many others will ever hardly see the light of day because they don't want this information out. They want to control the internet and they're going to do it if people do not take action. That doesn't mean going out and getting knives and guns and trying to shoot up people. No, this is not about violence. It's about being able to take back what is rightfully yours the right way. And until we all decide to work together, it's never going to change. That doesn't make it impossible. 
And that's why I will never give up. Until I cannot do this anymore, I'm going to continue. I hope other people in this world have that kind of passion. Because if we win, we all win. Stop worrying about one or two people trying to get out of the system. Because it's not going to happen. They're not going to let you. Let Dean Clifford, who is an amazing person, who gives out amazing information and knows what he's talking about, use that gentleman as an example of what the governments are willing to do and bend the rules and bend the laws to prove a point that one person cannot make a difference. If we get a bunch of people to get that information and we all start sitting there and saying no more, they can't throw everybody in jail. They'll try. Thanks for watching. Peace.